Good day everyone. Please subscribe, like and share these videos as widely as possible to help my channel grow. We continue with our reading today and we'll read from Genesis 19 in the King James 1611 Bible. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, in those days they often had to, two gates with a space between them that entered into the city. They built it that way as part of a defense strategy in times of war or if the city is under siege. This space between the gates was used by the people in those days as a sort of court. This is where deals were made and where officials held hearings and so on and so forth. For Lot to have been sitting in the gate meant that he probably held an office in the city or maybe even have been, at the very least, a city official. So this space is where legal stuff happened. We can also see this in 2 Samuel 19 verse 8. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. This was after David's son Absalom was killed. David had time, had, had a time of mourning for his son, and the people did not understand why, because the rebellion was now over. But then, when he returned to his place as king and judge, which was in the gate, the people rejoiced, for the king is back at the gate. We also see it in Daniel 2, verse 48 to 49. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. And again in 1 Kings 22 verse 10. And the king of Israel and Josephath, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes, in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Okay, continuing with Genesis 19 and the rest of verse 1. It reads, And Lot seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Um, in Genesis chapter 10, we see that the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Admah, and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. So this has been a group of cities that has been around for a long time. Even in Genesis 14, we read about these cities. This is when they lost the battle against the Mesopotamians and Abraham had to go and rescue Lot. Now, if Abraham only obeyed God 40 years earlier and not take Lot with him, for God told him to leave his family and to go to this land, remember? In, it ruined Lot's life and it ruined his family, and you will see that it is accosting the nation of Israel to this day. Now, these five cities have, been, have all been discovered. Um, Zeboim, Adma, Gomorrah, Zodom, and Zoar. These are the five cities that was all famous for their inhabitants being homosexual. Verse 2. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray thou, you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Well, to know them meant to have sex with them. This is Bible terminology, and we can see it in Genesis 4, where Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Verse 6, And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man yet. 
Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. What is wrong with this man? You know, you can live with the heathen, and they can slowly rub off on you without you realizing it. You may even have been brought up to believe a certain way, not realizing that you were wrong all this time, since it felt so right. And the older you get, the more difficult it is to shrug off such ideas. Let's continue in verse 8. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under my sh the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn. They are saying that Lot came there on vacation? He's been living there for 25 or more years. But you see, as soon as you cross a heathen, nothing matters to them. And you become a zero in their eyes. And he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee that with, than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Both small and great? So there were even kids involved in this mess. And even after they were smote with blindness, they were still trying to find the door. Some people are so driven in their passion, in their sin, that even when God judged them, they still go on sinning. And the men said unto Lot, As thou hear any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the city of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. You know, one angel of the Lord at one point in the Bible killed 185,000 men in one night. And here we have two angels. Hmm. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. Now remember that God said in the previous chapter that if he finds only 10 righteous, he will not destroy the city. So let's count. We have Lot, his wife, at least two married daughters and their husbands, and the two unmarried daughters. That is eight people. Don't you think that in 25 years there could have at least been two people converted? And if so, then God would not have destroyed these cities. I guess the question is, what do we have to show for our righteous lives? How many people did we lead to the Lord, or have we at least been involved in something that saved souls? And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. They thought, you must be joking. God will destroy these cities? Yeah, right. See, sinners, the homosexual crowd especially, they don't see anything wrong with their sin. They really don't. They don't understand why it would make God angry. It is for people like these that the Bible says that God would give them over to a reprobate mind. He gives them up to their own vile affections. Now, don't get me wrong, God can still forgive their sin like any other sin and use them and what happened to them for good, but they have to choose God for this to happen. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, isn't it strange? Judgment is coming and Lot takes his time packing. Isn't it the same with us trying to hold on to that one sin for just a little while longer? And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand 
and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my Lord, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. O let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. So the judgment of God cannot fall until his children get out. Many preachers use this verse to perpetuate the belief in the pre-tribulation rapture. One needs to make a distinction between tribulation and God's wrath. We will be here for a tribulation, but we will be out before God's wrath. Anyway, verse 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Brimstone is burning sulfur. They discovered those cities and all over the place there are sulfur balls. Tens of thousands of it. Not yet burnt out. They are about golf ball sized and I think it's 99.6% pure sulfur. Nothing like it is even found anywhere else on the whole earth. These cities today looks like just cliffs. You have to look at it from further away to make out the outlines of the city. When you are right up next to it, you can put your finger in it and it is just ash. It got baked so hot that it turned the cities into solid ash. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Nothing grows there today. I think that the Dead Sea was very much alive in that time, else why would you build cities on its shores? But after God's judgment, it became salty and nothing can live in it. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. It says in Deuter Deuteronomy 29 verse 23, And that the whole land therefore is brimstone and salt and burning that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adama and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. This is about 600 years after God judged them, and the land is still burning, so they cannot plant anything there. It was probably still smoldering, but still. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. So Lot was saved for Abraham's sake. And Lot went up out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zohar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. 
Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made the father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger she also bare a son, and, she, and called his name Ben-Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. The Moabites and the Ammonites are causing trouble for Israel to this day. Here's a map of the two kingdoms in those times. In Deuteronomy 23, 2, it says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. This is one of the rules God gave Moses. An illegitimate child cannot become a citizen for ten generations. In Gen Genesis 38, Judah left his family, married a heathen girl, had three sons, and his wife died. Judah then gave his firstborn a wife called Tamar. We know Tamar must have been a Moabite because of, if you follow the genealogy in the Bible, you come to Ruth, who was a Moabite. Now, the firstborn of Judah died, for he was wicked, and the secondborn married her. He also died for being wicked, so Judah did not want his last remaining son to marry her. Tamar then tricked Judah into having sex with her, and she bare him twins. One of them is called Pharez. He was an illegitimate child. Later, Ruth, the Moabite Tess, had a son with Boaz, and they called him Obed. He was the father of Jesse who was the father of David. In Ruth 4, verse 18 to 22, we read, Now these are the generation of Pharez. Pharez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. If you count, you will find that David is the 10th generation of a bastard son of Judah. Isn't it interesting how God was already getting a king ready for the Israelites when they wanted one now? Remember, Saul is what they got when they didn't want to wait. And he didn't turn out so good, did he? So they got David anyway. I'm sure there is a lesson in there somewhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is all we have time for today. Please like, subscribe, and even comment on these videos. Share as widely as possible, as this will help my channel to grow. We have a Skype Bible study session at 6 p.m. South African Standard Time every Sunday night. If you are interested in, in it to join, please pop me an email. You can find mine in the description. Don't forget to leave a donation. Instructions on how to do so will follow. And God bless. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of our next video. You can help us create better videos by leaving a donation on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you. We hope to see you next time.